This is Harry Judd for Boxing Social. We're at Natasha Jonas and Marie Eve De Carey, Open Media, weigh in. I'm delighted to be joined by Andy Clark. Just seen Ricky the Hit Manhattan weigh in there. Uh, Yo, know, take me back. He looks in, in incredible condition. Yeah, he did. He did. He came in at 159 and a half, so that's 11 stone, 5 pounds, and, and 8 ounces. And he looks terrific. And I'm all for this. I remember commentating on Tyson against Roy Jones and I was a bit nervous about that because the red mist can always descend and you've got a heavyweight against somebody who was never a heavyweight and I just worried about it a bit but I don't with this because they're in there just to feel that buzz, just to feel that adrenaline, they've got massive respect for each other and it's about just inspiring people to get some weight off or get back active or set themselves a little goal, a challenge, something achievable that they can meet and just feel the the glow of, of doing it, of meeting that challenge. And that's what this is about. I think it's it's like getting a band back together. You know, you look at his corner tomorrow night, he's going to have, uh, Kerry Kays will be in there uh, for one. Um, just people we've seen around all week, seeing his dad around, Paul Speak, all of these guys, it reminds you of, of, of back in the day and, and that's that's it's, it's quite nostalgic uh, but in a good way is the only fear perhaps on Saturday night if it's not competitive that's what the only fear I've got from Ricky is that if they don't put on a good show then that's the problem that Ricky sees with this event there's no fear in terms of him getting injured perhaps or Marco getting injured it's the fact that if it's not competitive enough Andy these are two incredibly experienced highly skilled campaigners they will know how to make this work they will know how to do this and make it look good they will have had plenty of conversations about how how do we do this it won't be scripted as such but they, they know how to do this they know how to do this so that nobody's going to take any liberties with the other one that that is not going to happen but you know they'll 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 give us a good show they will definitely give us a good show Ricky's been very open about his mental health and one of the reasons why he's been doing this is because of that and I think the routine, fitness is a key part of this for Ricky. Is there a worry perhaps, I asked Matthew the same question, that the high and the adrenaline of Saturday for him and the, the extreme low perhaps the week after, is it the fear that he could possibly go down a different path or what, what, what can you take from it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I know what you're saying because boxing is a sport of ridiculous highs and just mind-numbing, shattering lows. Um, you know, the brighter the lights, the darker the shadow. And he's been under the brightest of lights and he's been in some really dark shadows. But this just kind of takes that and just flattens it out a bit. So you get that buzz of the lights, that flavour, that taste, that kind of whiff in your nostrils of what you used to do but without the potential for that career-threatening, life-altering, mind-numbing defeat that could send you spiralling into one of those shadows. That's not on the table because, I, I mean, they are scoring this, there are judges, but it just doesn't, no one cares. You know, it's, so I think you've just, you've got the upside without the downside. Mayweather on Friday came out and said he mentioned Ricky's name and said that perhaps 2023 he'd like to come to the UK. I asked Ricky, let's just see what happens Saturday before we think of what happens next. But is that a fight you want to see again? I thought that's an interesting one, that, because because he lost to Mayweather, that makes it different. Him and Barrera just weren't, they were never going to collide because they were too far apart in weight. And they're two legends with huge respect for each other. But for him to have a move around with Mayweather... I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I think that'll be, I think that'll be tricky, because of the history. What did you recall? What were your memories of the U.S. tour, U.K. tour, and yeah, him coming to Manchester and getting the, the warm welcome that we all thought he'd get? What are your memories of that fight? Just of being absolutely addicted to 24/7. I was covering a bit of boxing at the time, but not, but not a lot, as much as I kind of could. But I was mainly on football and. Being addicted to 24-7 and just almost talking myself into the fact that I thought he could win during fight week. Seeing the scenes from Vegas, I was round at a mate's flat in Baker Street, staying up all night watching it. And I remember by the time the fight came around, they weren't really boxing fans and they'd kind of flaked out. There'd been too many kind of guitar hero drinking games going on. And, and I kind of swerved most of them to make sure that I made it through to the fight and just feeling kind of disappointed that not disappointed in him but just disappointed for him that he that he didn't manage to get the win but feeling that there was 
absolutely no shame in it because Mayweather's Mayweather. And yeah, I mean, it was just an unbelievable ride with Hatton. It came before my time covering the sport, really, although I, I was commentating on this fight against Senchenko 10 years ago, and that was that was some that was some experience. I listened to that on Five Live, listened to that on the radio. I didn't even have Sky Sports at home at that point. Well, it was on, it wasn't on Sky, it was on, I think it was on Prime Time, I think it was called. But it was pay per view, though, wasn't it? You had to buy it. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was. Um, I remember I was working with Paulie Malinaji, and he was he was absolutely gutted by, by the defeat because he was lined up to fight Ricky in New York in the fight afterwards. And But he, even that was kind of. He lost, but he 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 got what he wanted, which was an answer. Um, because those years after Pacquiao, they were really hard. They they were really dark, I think, at times. Well, not I think. I mean, we know, don't we? Because because he said. But it was. We will never see anything like it again. We've seen Josh Warrington since. Who, who you know, you see what he does in Leeds at Elland Road. But the support that Hatton had is just absolutely phenomenal. And I know that people said at the time and post career well if he hadn't blown up in weight maybe he would have done even better than he did but he wouldn't have done it the same way would he it, it wouldn't have been the same you know it, the, i think he did it absolutely right uh, and people forget how good he was sometimes people now like to try and be all clever and revisionist and say oh he was never that good they say it about mike tyson they've even said it about Hatton sometimes because he couldn't beat mayweather or pacquiao i mean behave yourself you know these are two of the greatest fighters of the modern era Hatton was a brilliant fighter, incredible to watch, brought an excitement and fever to boxing that, like I said, we may never see again. And, you know, if, if you care at all about boxing, you love Ricky Hatton. Care about British sport, you, you, you know about Ricky Hatton. And, and as well, being in the company of him a few times now, working with Boxing Social, just a really, really lovely man. So uh, humble in his ways, but look, it's a big card on Saturday, huge, huge card, huge boxer card. There's a lot of British domestic clashes, a lot of fights where you don't really normally see boxers take. You know, this English title fight that's happening, the British title eliminator, with, uh, and obviously Dalton Smith um, defending that, that title. Not, not, not fights that British or fight fans take in it or fighters take really anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the card on Saturday. I'm commentating on the, the top three fights and then the, and then the exhibition, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I love a British title fight. I think that a British title fight is always capable of topping any card. We've got a, a world title unification with, with Jonas and Decare, which is, which is brilliant. But I just think that domestic titles are kind of overlooked a bit these days. And if you've got a card with, say, a British title top of it, maybe an English title like we've got this one and then an area title that is a good card you know we're at the Manchester Arena on Saturday I think the tickets have gone fairly well maybe eight ten thousand something like that but another week you might be at a smaller arena pack it out pack that arena out get get a title fight at the top of it you know it's that's what it's about and we're really lucky in this country to have that that ladder of titles area national British because in other countries they don't have it and so they have to wait until maybe they can fight for a European before people really, before they get beyond that mode of, of, of learning fights. Whereas if you win an area title in your sixth or seventh fight, which you can do, you, you, you're in championship fights from then on. You know, it's, it's a great, great thing. And they, they just, they deliver, those fights deliver so, so consistently. They deliver, but they also give not only us as fans a bit of an idea where they are in their career, because obviously they're boxing someone that we know, British, uh, a British contender, but it also gives them as a training team and, and himself as a boxer to know where they are in their career, because you're boxing someone that you know. Yeah, and I think that's, that, that, that's exactly it. That's, that's what they do. They, they give you that yardstick, and if you lose, then you come again. You know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Whereas... If you've got yourself to 17 and 18 and 0 and you've never really boxed anyone, then all of a sudden you go in for a, say it's a European title fight or, or whatever it is, a, a ranking belt with one of the sanctioning bodies, and it's your first really competitive fight and you lose it, it can feel like your world has ended. I, I've seen it in Europe with a, with a few fighters. I saw Polly McCrory clean out Leon Bunn a few weeks ago, ringside in Frankfurt, and Leon Bunn's a decent fighter. I've seen him a few times, but that was supposed to be his breakout night. He was undefeated. Yeah. And he lost. And he's, that, I mean, that, that's a tough thing to take. It's a really tough thing to take. Whereas you get used to fighting the championship fights. You lose the odd one. You win the odd one. All right, you lose, but you think, okay, but I could handle that. 
you know, he was, it was an English title fight, but he's better than English title level. He's going to go on and do things. And then you just, you take it from there. You know, it's a level at a time. You know, it's, it's, that's how you, that's how you do it. You look at people like Warrington yeah. and Billum Smith, who I, who I really like in terms of his approach. It's kind of like, okay, I've won this title. Yeah, all right, yeah, I can do this. Let's see if we can do the next one. Ben mentioned yesterday or announced that hopefully uh, the Liam Smith and Chris Eubank Jr. for early next year. It's a fight that Liam Smith has wanted. That's the reason why he moved to boxer. So it's good news for Liam, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, and it's a good fight, isn't it? I don't, I don't think it can really... <clears throat> it's one of those fights I don't think it can really miss. Because they both love to come forward. And... You're right, that is definitely why Liam Smith signed for boxer because that fight looked like it was done, basically. And Eubank needs to get in there and do something because it'll be a year, basically, since he fought Liam Williams. And what happened with Conor Ben was nothing to do with him, of course. Um, but it was unfortunate. He's not getting any younger. And I think it's, I think it's a great fight for both of them. WBC have ordered uh, Ruiz Wilder. Again, I'm just a massive fan of that fight. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely here for that. You know, it's, I, I'm definitely here for that because that's going to be a good fight. Again, it's going to be a good watch. I like Wilder. I think he brings an enormous amount to the division. I would probably, you could argue he would be second maybe in the rankings, the heavyweight rankings. Some people, myself included, would maybe put him ahead of Usyk, even though Usyk is unified champion, just because of the fights he had against Fury. You can make that case. You know, you can make that case. Um, it's great to see him back. And Ruiz, I think, will always regret coming into that second fight with Joshua in the condition that he did because it shouldn't really have happened. But it did happen. It doesn't erase what he achieved at Madison Square Garden. Um, but yeah, and on it, Andy Ruiz up against Deontay Wilder, there's, there's plenty to like about that. Yeah, and if Ruiz is in shape, Fast hands is good. Move, yeah, it's such a good mover as well. That, that's so exciting for me. Um, AJ has come out and said he's not fighting till 2023. Arguably, I'd probably say that's probably a good idea. But um, you know, again, we're hearing talks all the time. But a wilder AJ perhaps next year, seeing where AJ goes. Yeah, I mean, I I would kind of expect his next fight to be Dillian White if Dillian White wins on the 26th, and I think that's the right. That's the right fight because I think they could generate a huge amount of interest in it. It would sell really well. I think it's the right kind of step for him in terms of the boxing, and it makes massive sense for for Matchroom and for the zone. So I think that fight ticks every single box. They might be a little bit nervous. Eddie Hearn and Frank Smith, who's, who's here today, watching Dillian White um, on the 26th. But you would probably you would expect him to to win that fight, and then they can get that done. But yeah, I think we, you know, there are fights that we want to see and Joshua Wilder is one of them. Yeah, we have had a lot of fights, a lot of discussions. There's always discussions going in with, within boxing. I mean, you know, Devin Haney and uh, you know, all the rest of it, and Terence Crawford, for those fights that, that, that are not happening. You know, why, well, yeah, I know there's amalgamation, different reasons, but does that put the sport in such a bad light that those fights don't happen? Yeah, I mean, it's an imperfect answer to say that it's kind of always been like this and, and we just get used to it and shrug our shoulders a bit. But, I mean, it kind of has always been like this. And there's... Crawford Spence is enormously frustrating, particularly now that Crawford like isn't with top rank anymore. I don't know how much of a problem that ever really was, but you could always blame it if you wanted to. It, it's, it is very, very frustrating. I, I tend to try and look on the bright side and look at the fights that we, that we do get because we do get some really good ones hopefully we will get Fury Usyk next year I'm confident that'll happen so long as Fury beats Chisora that seems to be pretty much done I'd imagine it'll be in Saudi Arabia which would be a shame but I don't see any way around that really Usyk said when we were out there didn't he that you know I'm going to be back um, so I think that's what will happen with that but it's yeah it's frustrating but it, but it just kind of it's always been like that and finally then, it's frustrating, but again, another fight this weekend is Deji Mayweather. Um, again, I, I, I don't know how we've got to this part, but those are the fights we, we just seem to be getting at the moment. What would you make of that? Well, I don't really kind of make anything of them because I don't, I don't really see it as being anything to do with me. Um, they could go and do their thing, uh, the, the YouTube lads, and I've got no problem with it. 
if they decide they want to box. I don't think they should ever be licensed as professionals. Jake Paul's getting to the point now where he could be considered a, a legitimate professional. Um, but you shouldn't just license them so they can box with small gloves and no head guards. Other than that, you know, feel free to go and do what you want. I mean, Floyd Mayweather is like, the man's picking up enormous checks for for basically just having a having a turn on the treadmill in his terms. I mean, it's it's hilarious. I bet he can't believe it. But the, the only thing that I that I see when it sometimes I just think, you know, you'll see Deji during the week kind of posturing a bit like he's a fighter and like this is a proper fight, and I just feel like. I guess he's got to act like that, though, hasn't he? He's got to act like it's a proper fight. Otherwise, you won't sell tickets. I know, but it just it does feel like a real... Gra oh, it's a stinker. It's a stinker, yeah. isn't it, Andy? Let's be right, it's a stinker. Yeah, you're just misleading people if you're trying to make them believe that this is in any way real. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's their, it's their circus, it's their game, their ball. They can do, they can do what they want with it.